Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of a PHP related topic. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for longtime speakers to test drive new talk ideas. If you'd like to give a 10 minute Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Right now, we have a good friend of mine, the founder of Memphis PHP, Jeremy Kendall, and he's going to be talking about harnessing the power of connected data. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Jeremy some feedback. Jeremy, take it away. All right, thank you. Let me uh, <clears throat> get started here by showing my screen. Give me a moment to make sure I get the correct one. Which screen do you see, Joe? You're good. I'm good. All right, great. This is Harnessing the Power of Connected Data. We are going to be talking about graph databases, which I'm guessing is something you may not have heard of. Um, this was uh, new to me just a very few years ago, and to tell you the truth, I discounted the topic entirely for a long time um, until I had a buddy sit down and show me exactly what they can do. And hopefully, in this uh, short amount of time, I can show you some of that magic that I saw. So here's the obligatory intro slide. And since we're talking graph databases anyway, I figured we would do a data visualization of my silly obligatory intro slide. So uh, the big yellow node there, I work at Graph Story. Um, going down the right-hand side, I currently live in Memphis, Tennessee, formerly of Nashville, and uh, I sure do miss Cal and the whole Nashville crew. If we jump up over onto the uh, the other side with the orange nodes and the things that I love. I love PHP. I've been programming uh, for the web and PHP for many, many years. Um, I love photography. Every once in a while I get a great picture. Um, I love barbecue. <clears throat> and if you see the other relationship coming off of barbecue, this data visualization confirms that Memphis, Tennessee is the only place to get barbecue. And Nashville, Tennessee is the only place to get hot chicken. And if you can't tell, I really, really love my food. Also, I'm a brand new father, so here's the obligatory, um, my son in his Halloween costume being held by my beautiful wife picture. Graph databases, what are they? First, let's start with what they're not. Every conversation I get into about graph databases generally has to be steered around this next topic. They are not charts. It's not going to be easy to figure out which percentage of this chart resembles Pac-Man with a graph database. It would probably be even more difficult to represent in this manner the which moral compass. Um, and my favorite, I think, here is the ethically challenged witch of the Northwest. So taking it away from charts, graphs are not charts, what are graph databases? What are some of their characteristics? We took a look a little bit on my intro slide. Um, we saw nodes. Those nodes had properties, my name, um, a food name, the, the PHP language, PHP, and also typed relationships. So there are arrows between, um, directed arrows between those nodes, but they're not just arrows. Some of the things I loved, some of the places were um, places I lived in the past, a, a place that I, where I currently live. Um, the strengths of a graph database is they're extremely fast and extremely powerful when it comes to dealing with connected data. Um, also, along with the uh, the power of that, and as we move away from SQL, frequently ACID is a, is a very big concern. Um, graph databases generally, and Neo4j in specific, which I'm most familiar with, um, is uh, ACID. Weaknesses. There are many, or there are many, <clears throat> there are many great things. One of the big weaknesses is it's such a giant paradigm shift from where we have all been trained to think about normal forms and breaking up our data, um, that can be really hard to get over. But once you make the jump, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. Examples of graph databases, Neo4j, Titan, OrientDB, there are some others. Why should you care? Uh, first of all, you get all of the no SQL joy, the schemaless and semi-structured data. You get to escape from join hell 
when you're trying to bring together so many related things in a relational database, we all know what those queries can start to look like when we start to get deeper and deeper and related directly to that. Speed. When it comes to connected data, you cannot beat a graph database. The reason for that, one of the, one of the reasons for that is the way graph databases query and graph databases bring back the data you're looking for. And the big benefit is node traversal across these relationships, and the relationships have a first class status. Um, they're just as important as the things they are connecting. Um, and the relationships as well as nodes can have properties um, and labels. And I only showed relationships going one direction, but they can go in uh, multiple directions, so you can get some really interesting information that way. Graph data and graph data models are very whiteboard friendly. Look at this slide, pretend it's a whiteboard, and all of us have had these conversations. Let's go into the conference room, let's get out the markers, let's talk about the relationship between Alice, Chris, and Bob, and you know, maybe that's a coworker, who knows? You start drawing circles and arrows, and that's what graph data looks like. And it's very easy to take what you're seeing right here and put it into a graph. So let's take that a little bit farther. Talk about Neo4j specifically and their uh, query language named Cypher. <clears throat> it's their declarative query language. Um, it's a pretty quick study. It's it's a kind of a it twists your brain at first, but it's it's quick to pick up. Um, partially because what we saw is whiteboard friendly that looks like graph data. Cypher can, is sometimes referred to as like ASCII art representing graph data, and we'll see that in just a second. And there are some clauses and concepts um, that are familiar from SQL <clears throat> that kind of helped me feel more comfortable as I started getting into graph databases. So we're going to take a look at a simple example of how to create data, create uh, relationships, and then how to query relationships. And since we already looked at this, let's take a look <clears throat> at my intro slide. And this is the goal. This is where we want to get to from zero. I would guess, because my brain does this, when I look at data like this, I start breaking it up in my head and thinking, what, what tables, what foreign keys, um, what, what are the relationships that I'm going to have to um, explicitly add to my data? In this case, we're not going to have to sit down and write a whole bunch of uh, you know, the squares and arrows and try and break up data. We're just going to start writing. I talked about ASCII art. If the open parent and closed parent there are like the circle on your board, well, I, I'm going to label my node as a person. I'm going to label my company's node as a company. Memphis and Nashville are both cities in uh, Tennessee. And we got hot chicken. We got uh, barbecue. Both of those are food. So you can you can see quickly all these these perhaps these circles and arrows you can imagine drawing on a board. Or here are all the circles, right? So let's go take a look at what some of the arrows look like connecting circles. But just before we jump over, the very first thing you see in all these creates is, um, for me, JK, and that for graph stories, GS. Those are identifiers we can carry along um, throughout the query to refer back to things that we created. And all of this, you don't see any terminating um, semicolons. This is all one query. You can create all this in one go. And this is the next part. So I have my circle there, JK, works at, with a label, um, or with a, uh, with a property on that, work at Graph Story, live in Memphis, lived in Nashville, so you can create two relationships at one go. And here's my claim to barbecue fame in Memphis represented in the graph. So that's how you get all of that in. Now let's talk about getting it out. First, we start with a match. The match is similar, very similar conceptually to select. <laughs> and we're looking for a labeled node. I labeled me as a, as a person. And I'm going to query, um, this would be similar to where with my, with my name. And I want to find out the things that I love. So I add that loves relationship. And the L looks like one, shouldn't have used an L is an identifier I can carry to the next part of the query. So I grab that, 
Cypher has this really cool thing with. It's similar to a, a subquery. You grab the things that you just matched up top and you're taking it down to the next. So I'm a person and I want to know the job that I work at. I'm going to take that data with another with down to the next part of my query. And I want to match where I, the person, am currently living, which city. And then if you looked at lived in, if I had added all the other cities that I'd ever lived in, that one thing, we don't have to do multiple join tables and, and inner joins and joining again on the city table over and over and over. That one query would find every single city that I've ever lived in. All of those identifiers get uh, dumped at the end of the query. That's what I'm returning. So that's person, loves, job, and uh, O for city. Look at that. I didn't bring in. I missed one. There's a bug in this code. I didn't bring in my current city. So it wouldn't look exactly like this. There would be a missing node. So, uh, boy, strike, strike one for me there. So that is your whirlwind intro to graph databases, to connected data. This is a very, very simple example. <clears throat> but if you could start or, or think about all of the polyglot programmers they are and how many cool loves nodes would be, um, uh, loves relationships from different programmers to different languages over time, you can begin to see or perhaps imagine some of the incredible power available to you through a graph database. Thank you so much. I'm right about at 10 minutes. Um, if there are any questions, I'd love to take them. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for having me. I always love this. Um, Cal Joe, you guys are, are doing an amazing job, an amazing thing for the community. All right, thanks. Uh, no questions. So thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a lightning talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Jeremy some feedback on this talk. Thanks.